I want to start now going back and looking at the technology that we discussed earlier on. So the audio system in this room is being driven by the QSIS platform from QSC. Uh, just a really quick show of hands. How many people in the room have used or are aware of QSIS? Use it on a project. Yeah, that's what we like. All right, so for the benefit of those who have not used it in the past, I want to talk through what QSIS is. So this is our QSIS Core 110F processor. We launched that at Infocom last year. It is a software appliance for DSP video and control. What's that mean? People think QSIS is a DSP. Well, yes, it can do that, but it's not all it does. So I want to discuss what I mean by a software appliance. So. This might look familiar to many of you. It is a Nokia cell phone. And that Nokia cell phone, um, I'm not going to call from the dark ages. We, we've all had them. They're great. It's very good at making and receiving phone calls. It also sends and receives SMS messages. Pretty much that's all it does. It'll source some contacts, but that's largely it. This, on the other hand, is a, also a phone. It can make and receive phone calls, send and receive SMS messages. But it allows me to do many more things. And that's not because necessarily the hardware design. The key piece to the iPhone is the software application running on it. The operating system allows me to load in applications so I can surf the web. Or I can load up an RT analyzer. I can do anything I want because of the software layer that this product is built on. That's how we relate to QSIS. QSIS is really just a computer. And on that computer, we run a QSC developed real-time Linux operating system that allows us to do so much more than just DSP. Yes, of course, we can do uh, acoustic echo cancellation and uh, DSP processing, but we'll talk about all the other bits that we can do with it. So on the back of the box, we have got analog I.O., 24 channels in total. Eight of those are fixed mic line inputs. Another eight are fixed line level outputs. And the channels in the middle are what we call flex channels. These are software configurable as either an input or an output in real time using software. So this can be configured as a 16 by 8 device or a 12 by 12, 11 by 13, any combination you want. If you're using the flex channels as inputs, then in total we have 16 mic line inputs. Inside the DSP environment, we also have 16 AEC processors, so we can accommodate large acoustic echo cancellation projects. We also have 16 GPI, so each of those microphones could have a push to talk button or a push to mute. And we also have 16 GPO, so we can drive the LEDs for those microphones. So we can completely accommodate the analog and control requirements for 16 microphones on that product without requiring any expanders or extension boxes. On the other side of the product, we have our network ports. And on those network ports, we do 128 by 128 networked audio channels. Those allow us to interface with third part, or excuse me, with other QSIS peripheral devices, such as I.O. frames, where we might have distributed I.O. around the room, or in fact, elsewhere on the campus. We also, over those network ports, do voice over IP. And it's at this point that we start to recognize the advantage offered by QSIS of working in the software layer because we were able to offer voice over IP capability to the product without developing any hardware. We simply wrote software code that we loaded into our software application that enabled voice over IP capability in the product. And that became available to every future customer who bought the product, but also every previously existing customer who simply upgraded their firmware and got access to the voice over IP capability. We also have media streaming decoding capabilities, which means we can ingest standard media streams. We can then de-embed the audio content and present that audio to the DSP environment. So you can bring in an IPTV stream, for example, take the audio, process it in your DSP domain, and pass it out to your high-quality loudspeakers rather than through the TV speakers, for example. So these are some of the things that you get when you start to work in the software domain. You don't have to develop so much hardware. On the far left-hand side, you'll see a telephone line that allows us to integrate with analog telephone systems for customers who have not yet migrated to voice over IP. Or there are some customers who, whose IT department prefers to have effectively an analog firewall between their corporate uh, LAN and their AV products. So we can accommodate both of those on the same device. 
And also in blue, we have the USB device port, which allows the QSYS Core 110F to behave as an external sound device for the Rack PC that's also in the same credenza. So on that PC, running Skype for Business, the QSYS Core 110F can be the external speakerphone with AEC for that PC. So that's a review of the product that we launched at this show last year. And now I want to talk about how we integrate the new products that we're bringing to market at this show. To do that, I want to talk about the target market. And the target market for us really revolves around the evolution of the software codec. We're seeing our customers migrating aggressively away from hardware-based video conferencing system towards software applications such as Skype for Business or Jabber WebEx, there's many of them, running on standard PC hardware. So it, this is really the target market and how our application uh, is, is based. So to do that, I want to talk about the common problems experienced by integrators who are doing these solutions today. So on the bottom right-hand corner, that icon labeled USB audio, that represents my entire audio system. All of my microphones, processing, AEC processing, my amplifiers, loudspeakers, that's all self-contained in that block. And we have a USB connection out to the PC. What I want to do is focus on the video side of things for the moment. So in the top right-hand corner, we have a video camera. Typically in small rooms like this, that might be a USB camera. So that camera typically requires power, video, and control. Three different data types and three different cable types. The, the power and the control is reasonably straightforward to manage. But the USB presents some challenges. USB is uh, pre-made cables. You, you really cannot terminate those in the field easily. So you have to pull connectors through conduit. It also has quite significant cable distance limitations. So that solution really often requires USB extensions to get from the camera to the PC. Those USB extenders are both expensive and often problematic. Not every USB extender works with every device. So this we see as, a, as an opportunity to provide something better. What about laptops? You know, people often want to support the bring your own device scheme, whereby you bring in your laptop and you run Skype for Business or Link on your laptop. Well, in this case, yes, we have USB audio from the, uh, excuse me, USB video, just like we did before. But in this case, the audio system is in the credenza, so we may need an additional USB extender to get that out to the laptop. And in order to provide a single point of connectivity for the end user, it's quite common to ha install a USB hub under the table so that the customer only has one USB cable to plug into the computer. Either way, when you look at it like this, we're throwing hardware band-aids at the solution to really make up for the fact that USB just wasn't designed to be used like this. USB is great at connecting two devices together over short distances but it's terrible at transporting data over long distances. And also at the camera point, you know, we've got three different cable types there, one of which is really problematic. So what happens when your customer says, you know what, I want a rack PC, but I want to be able to support those situations when my customer brings in their own laptop? Well, at this point, we, have an, we hit another issue with USB. It's a point-to-point -point connection. I can't take a USB keyboard and plug it into multiple computers at the same time, just as I cannot take a USB audio or video system and plug them into multiple computers at the same time. So the systems integrator is presented with the issue of having to tell his client, I'm sorry, you can't do that both at the same time. I'll give you a USB switch, and you can choose which of those PCs is receiving the audio and video data, but you can't have them both at the same time. And so to make that user friendly, we're probably going to put a control system into, this, into the solution, which involves hardware, programming time, et cetera. So again, lots of hardware and cost to try and provide what is effectively still a compromised solution. Well, what about when you want to bring multiple cameras into the equation? Well, at this point, USB truly is not your friend. It's really not the way to do it. So people migrate over to HDMI at this point. And again, HDMI, very, very good technology for getting digital video from one point to another. So at this stage, we've got multiple video cameras, HDMI. We bring them into a HDMI video switcher. 
that may then go out to a separate bridging device, or it may have a bridging device built into it. But either way, you have to get multiple HDMI connections to your AV matrix. That may require a, um, HDMI extenders, because again, HDMI has got distance limitations. Again, you cannot terminate those cable types in the field. So a different approach, but still presenting very much the same type of problem. We want to do a bit better than this. And those people who know QSC and QSYS will know that our solution is entirely IP-based. So it all revolves around the network. So our QSYS audio system, we collect all the microphones, we process it, we spent, talk to all the loudspeakers, and we have a, a truly IT-based network-centric approach. And we want to apply that philosophy to the camera technology. So at this show, we introduced IP cameras for the meeting space. IP cameras are very prevalent in the security world and CCTV, but they're not prevalent in the meeting room space. And we want to change that because IP gives us some really, really huge benefits. First of all, from a cabling perspective, these are I and PoE capable cameras. So a single cable gives me power, control, and the video data. Also, it's Cat5 or E cable, Cat5 or better cable, so we can field terminate that really easily. So we're using Cat5 and the network for really what it was designed for, distributing data over long distances. We no longer have those cable distance limitations. We can run 100 meters on that camera. Very, very easy. So that is our approach for getting video into the system. So let's take a quick look at the camera. There are actually two cameras in the family. There's the PTZ-12X72, which is a 12 times optical zoom with a 72 degree field of view. And we have the PTZ-20X60, which is a 20 times optical zoom with 60 degree field of view. These are, as I say, single cable appliances. Power, video, and control over the same cable. You can have an auxiliary power cable if, or a power adapter if you want, but you don't need one. Make no mistake, this is also a very, very high quality camera. This presents 1080p 30 to the software appliance that you're going to connect it to. These stand very well in comparisons against cameras from other manufacturers that cost ten to $14,000. From an image quality perspective, these are really, really high quality cameras. So let's look about how, at how we integrate that into the QSA solution. So with QSYS, we have the core processor, and that manages all of our peripheral devices. Those peripheral devices might be touchscreens. They might be paging stations or network-connected amplifiers. And so what the core does is it manages those. It, it monitors them, makes sure they're working, looks after their health. If they are running the wrong version of firmware, the core will automatically manage the firmware on those devices. It, it's a central point of managing all the peripheral devices. And the cameras I've just shown you are a truly integrated part of that system solution. So the core manages all the cameras. It looks after all their properties. It also gives the camera firmware if it needs it. So it's a truly integrated piece of the QSYS solution. So we've got the video data into the network. We need some way to get the video and the audio out to the destination PC. So ideally, what we would have is a QSYS peripheral somewhere near that laptop PC. And so that TSC7T that I just showed you happens to be a network-connected QSYS peripheral that is on the table near the laptop that we want to present. So we use the USB port on the TSC7T to present USB audio and video to the laptop. So again, the TSC7T is a simple network-connected power of Ethernet QSYS peripheral device. So we pull up our laptop, we connect via USB, and at that point, the TSC7T presents itself to the computer as a USB speakerphone with AEC processing, and also a high-quality USB webcam. And it also sets itself as the default audio and video device within your software codecs that you're using. So as a result, from a user perspective, there's really nothing else to do. You simply plug in your USB cable, and all of a sudden, your laptop that was using the little webcam and microphone is now using the room audio and camera system as its sources. So as I say, these are truly integrated QSYS peripheral devices. You can see that we can use the touchscreen to pan, tilt, zoom the camera. 
you'll get a moment. Oh, yeah, there's Patrick, very proud of himself for using the camera. Very good. All right, but it's very simple to use because it's really all natively controlled and managed inside the solution. So this is it. This is our approach. Very simple IP devices to get video into the network and very simple IP devices to get audio and video out of the network. But what about that situation where we had multiple cameras? So again, with USB and HDMI, it presents us with issues. But with this solution, they're all IP-based. And because it's IP-based, we can have as many cameras as we want on that network. So we simply, if we've got a large meeting space or we're doing an education facility, we associate many, as many cameras in the room as is necessary to cover the content. And then in real time, the TSC 7 t effectively the USB bridging device, can change which camera it's watching and presenting to the software application. So the software application never knows that the video feed changes. We're just simply sending it different camera feeds. So we can do that all in real time without having to restart the call. So when we launched the TSC 7 t at last year's Invocom, we were presenting it as a touchscreen dialer and a control interface. So you can use this to interface with your voice over IP dialing. You can bring up your contacts list and your keypad. You can do the same thing for your analog telephone line, your POTS dialer, all presented on that touchscreen device. You can use the same touchscreen device to control the room. So for example, the lighting system or the shades, or change the video display on the flat panel monitors. So it really, you're, you're using that as a control interface for the control engine that's running inside QSYS that you can use to manage all these devices. And now, with this release, we can also use it as the AV, or the USB to AV bridging solution. Now, we would love for you to use it like that, because you're really maximizing what QSYS can do. But we recognize that there may be existing control systems already in use by your customers. So if your customer's already using Crestron or AMX or Xtron or any of those third-party solutions, then instead of using the QSYS TSE7T as the bridge, we would use the QSYS IO USB bridge. So it provides the exact same AV to USB bridging capability of the TSE7T, but it does so without the touchscreen. So this device is very small, compact, it's very discreet, it's designed to be installed under the table right where your customer needs it. And over that USB-B connection, we provide that audio and video bridging to your software appliance. So that's it. That is our approach to solving these challenges. Now, we've addressed most of the issues that I outlined at the start. We've addressed the cabling issue, you know, single cable, field terminable, very, very simple to deploy. We've addressed the issue of having multiple cameras available to the bridge device. We can change whatever camera we're looking at. But what about that situation where we had a rack PC and we want to also support bring your own device laptop deployments? Well, these are just IP devices. So we can install as many IO USB bridges as we want, and they can all run concurrently. So we can have, for example, a very large boardroom table. We might have four or six IO USB bridges under that table, irrespective of where the CEO sits down. He can plug into the local USB connection. And at the same time, his rack PC has also got an IO USB bridge, and that's collecting the same audio and video information and presenting it to some webcasting software, or perhaps it's recording the meeting for future purposes. So with our solution, all of this is available concurrently. We've created a many-to-any -any matrix using just simple IP technology over a standard IT network. And the beauty of this is, is that those USB connections, they're all using standard UAC and UVC drivers. So there's no need to install any drivers on your PCs. So that is our solution. But we're not finished there, because of course, QSC, we also manage uh, manufacture amplifiers. So at last year's Infocom, we introduced the SPA series of amplifiers, which are designed for small spaces and meeting rooms. Well, we've, we've added two new products to that family here at this show. So we have four amplifiers in total within the family. They are two or four channel variants. And these are Energy Star compliant amplifiers. So very, very energy efficient for meeting room applications. We spent a long time working on the Energy Star compliance. So they will go into idle mode after 28 minutes. And if they detect any signals, they will then wake up. But unlike a number of other products on the market today, these will do them very gracefully. So it will gracefully ramp down to idle, 
and it will gracefully wake up from idle. So it's a very unobtrusive amplifier to use in your projects. They are also convection cooled, so they'll sit in your app rack nice and silently running. They also have remote standby if you want to manually put it into standby mode, or you can adjust the volume using the remote control options. They have many different um, power deployment and load capabilities. So using the switches on the Mac, we can configure these amplifiers for either low impedance or high impedance applications. So with just a very small number of amplifiers, number of SKUs, we can accommodate a lot of different application types. A good example would be a meeting room. We might take the four channel amplifier in our meeting room and use channels one and two in low impedance for our left and right of our program material. And then we might bridge channels three and four together to give us our 70 volt circuit in the ceiling. So very, very easy amplifier to deploy in your projects. <coughs> of course, we also need to mount the amplifier. So we've developed some very unique mounting capabilities into this product. So we can put it uh, under a table, in a wall cavity, in the ceiling, they are plenum rated. We can also mount them in the rack, either by themselves, or using these L-shaped brackets, we can also mount them side by side with a partner. All of the brackets that you've seen and all of the mounting configurations that you've seen, they're all available with the brackets that ship with the amplifier. You don't need to think ahead about which accessories to order with the product. And of course, to finish things off, QSC is also a very successful loudspeaker manufacturer. And so where premium audio quality is the driving force in your project design, we would highly recommend the acoustic design series of loudspeakers from QSC. These over the last 18 months have had a complete product refresh. We have a very um, complete catalog of both ceiling, surface, and new at this show, we now have pendant loudspeakers as well, all from the same product family. They also match very well with our amplifiers and DSP to get the maximum benefit out of them. And if cost is the driving factor in your product choice, then QSC, of course, we also offer the acoustic coverage series of loudspeakers. <laughs>